Self-care is definitely a buzzword that everyone's talking about and nobody really knows what it is. It's not necessarily pedicures and manicures and massages every day, but it's just simply taking care of yourself. So in this video, I am going to tell you exactly what it is, six tips to get self-care in every day that will be realistic and sustainable for you to keep yourself healthy. If you haven't hit the subscribe button yet, hit that button to be notified anytime I post new content related to women's health, hormones, or holistic health. In my opinion, self-care is literally just taking care of yourself. It doesn't have to be fancy, but I always kind of think um, that this is an interesting concept. I have gone through a long journey with self-care and learning how to actually take care of myself, not putting myself on the back burner like so many other mothers out there. I think that we are, as moms, as women, we're really just wired in a way to be caretakers. We make sure that everyone else's needs are met before ours, and we're really good at taking care of our little kiddos. So when you're looking at self-care for yourself and looking for ideas, honestly, look at how you take care of your kids. You feed them regularly, put them to bed on time, bathe them, ask them emotionally how they're doing, hug them, kiss them. Those are all still the same needs that a lot of adults, that all adults actually need um, as we go through life. So these are really great places to start with. And I wanna just remind you that self-care does not have to be hard and difficult and time consuming in this whole encompassing thing. I know that there's so many people out there talking about like these morning routines and bedtime routines and how you have to do all of this stuff. And a lot of people look at that, I myself included, and I'm like, I, I'm not doing that, I can't. I don't have the mental load, I don't wanna do it, I don't wanna have the capacity for it. And so I am going to give you six tips to just fit this in to keep yourself afloat. Cause we all know that you can't pour from an empty cup and doing some basic self care for yourself will make you a better mother, make you show up in the world easier and better and make you for yourself a happier woman. Number one is schedule movement in. Movement helps everything and nobody feels like doing it ever. If I waited until I felt like working out or going on a walk, I would do it sometimes because it's wired in my brain from doing it for so many years, but I would miss a lot of workouts and a lot of walks. You have to schedule this in like you would an appointment, you would anything else on your calendar and just sort of set a routine with it. Like for myself, I know that I do strength training Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and that's just what I'm doing on those days and I sort of plan my life accordingly. You don't have to do it as much as I do or the same days or anything, but plan in movement. You can do strength training, you can go on a run, you can go on a walk, you can do yoga, stretching, tai chi, qigong, whatever movement makes you happy. Go to classes with friends and be social, whatever makes you feel happy, but moving your body increases endorphins and serotonin, it decreases inflammation, it makes us just an overall happier person to move. So make sure that at least a few times a week you're getting in some sort of movement. Two is take care of your skin. I have been the person that has been so tired in the nights that I just go to sleep, I don't take off my makeup, things like that. But I would say in the last several years, I've gotten really into skincare and taking care of it. And it feels really, really good. It feels so good if you can just kind of take the time at night to like wash your face off, wash the day off and get yourself some like good products that you like that feel good. I keep mine very simple. I don't necessarily always buy like really expensive things, although I have. I love like just the CeraVe face wash and lotion. It's very simple, um, but it just feels really, really good on my skin. And just standing in the sink, taking a break from the world every night just feels so good to wash, cleanse, moisturize, um, so don't forget your skin. Number three is a bedtime routine. Like I mentioned earlier with our kids, we're taught when our kids are babies that we gotta have the bedtime routine because it will teach them that their, their brain, that it's time for bed, it'll help their circadian rhythm, it'll help wind them down. We are no different. I think a lot of us think that we can just run throughout the day, all day, doing all the things, run at night, put the kids to bed, keep doing chores, keep working, and then go to bed, lay down, and go to sleep soundly. And that's just simply not how our circadian rhythm works. Our nervous system is heightened and aroused. We gotta kind of, I always give the example of a snow globe. All day long, we're shaking that snow globe up and we're doing all these things. We're getting emails, we're running around, we're doing with the kids, we're cooking dinner, we're doing all the things, right? 
And that's just shaking that snow globe up. At night, at some point in the day, we gotta be able to set that down and let everything kind of come down. And that's gonna teach your nervous system the world's safe, we're good, we can go to sleep, it's nighttime. We gotta send those messages to our brain for our brain to wanna to sleep soundly at night. So do yourself a favor and do even like a 15 minute bedtime routine. It doesn't have to be long and elaborate and lots of journaling and meditation and all of that if you don't want to, but add the face, face uh, skincare routine in there with it. Wash your face, get away from blue light, breathe deeper, slow down, dim the lights down, hop into bed in comfortable clothes, maybe get a good novel out, something that's not super stimulating and not isn't going to you know, arouse you in any way and keep it simple. It doesn't have to be elaborate, but I do think it's important to do a similar routine so that your brain kind of knows this is nighttime, it's time for sleep. Let's settle everything down so that we can sleep soundly. Number four is check in with yourself. I briefly mentioned this earlier when I was talking about how we take care of our kids. Whenever we see our kids or our partners or family or friends, we're always like, how are you? Like, what's going on? How was your day? We ask other people these questions and yet we don't ask ourselves these questions. So part of your bedtime routine can be to check in with yourself. So for myself and what I tell my patients to do is when you hop into bed at night, maybe close your eyes, put your hand on your chest and just ask yourself how you're doing. You're not trying to change anything, modify it, judge it, shame it, resist it, push it away. You're not trying to do anything with it. You're just simply identifying and validating how you're feeling. Are you feeling sad? Are you feeling angry? Are you feeling excited? Are you feeling great, grateful or gratitude? Doesn't matter. Whatever is there is there. It's going to be there whether we gaslight ourselves out of it and try to repress it and change it or if we just simply let it be. So let yourself feel what you're feeling and just identify and validate that. And that will teach your nervous system that whatever you're feeling is safe and okay, part of the normal human experience, and it can be calm and not freak out when we do feel these emotions. Number five is aim for hydration. You know, a lot of us rush to the coffee pot in the morning, guzzle our caffeine, and maybe continue to drink coffee throughout the morning. Then maybe you have your afternoon tea or Starbucks or something like that. Maybe you have an evening glass of wine. A lot of us aren't getting in quite enough hydration. So make sure that you're getting in some hydration. I always like to just carry my water bottle with me all around so that I make sure that I have access to good water. As a bonus for you, you can add in little bits of electrolytes to your water. A super simple homemade way to do it is to just add a squeeze of lemon for a little bit of citrus and then add in a little bit of sea salt that gives you a little bit of trace mineral with your water. Not a huge amount, but some, and that can help the electrolytes help the water get into your cells a little bit easier than just plain water. Also, I set the boundary for myself that I have to have my adrenal cocktail before I start drinking coffee in the morning. So first thing in the morning, I make my adrenal cocktail and I just get the Jigsaw Health Adrenal Cocktail, which is just vitamin C, sodium and potassium in there, Redmond's Real Salt. Um, and this, it just, I had so many patients doing this and you can make it with citrus juice and potassium like coconut water and then add some sea salt to it for the sodium. Or you can just get the Jigsaw Health Adrenal Cocktail. It's just like a simple powder. It's not sweet, it's a little bit salty, but I think it tastes fine. And I just drink it while I'm working out. So after my workout, I have drank about 16 ounces of hydration, then I'm ready for my morning coffee. And number six, aim for some healthy nutrition throughout the day. You don't have to be a perfectionist with your nutrition. We don't have to buy into the only eat clean foods and everything's inflammatory and start to get really nervous about it. But if you can, fill your plates with protein, fat, and fiber. If you can kind of look at that framework for your meals throughout the day, that'll help you feel better, keep your hunger, energy, cravings, mood, and sleep in a better place, and you'll just overall feel better. So I always say, Protein's kind of the star of the show when you're thinking about meals. Ask yourself where that source of protein is. Then ask yourself, is there a healthy source of fat here? Just a couple grams. 
and then ask yourself if there's a fiber. So ideally some sort of produce. If you don't wanna do deal with vegetables and cooking those, you can do something like a berry or a piece of fruit with that. That has a little bit of fiber and call it a day. But I think filling your plate with a protein, fat, and fiber can be really, really helpful in helping you stay energized with stable energy, avoiding the crashes, having your cravings met, and just feel you like your blood sugar is overall in a better place. I hope this was helpful for you guys. I promise you that self-care does not have to be complex and complicated. It really is merely the act of taking care of oneself and honestly, showing yourself a lot more compassion. That's something that I've been kind of like just diving into my own life and talking through my patients and things like that, that just showing yourself compassion can be the best self-care that you can ever do. And kind of honoring your own experience that definitely sends, you know, sends really calming signals to your nervous system and will help calm down that fight or flight response um, that your nervous system feels like it needs to be in quite often. So I hope this was helpful for you guys. If you need help with your period, I have a period course called The Period Solution. And this course gives the exact protocols that I go through with every single patient. Um, that I go through in solving all the various period problems, whether that's PMS, irregular cycles, PCOS, hypothalamic amenorrhea, um, bloating, headaches, acne, all the things that we deal with as women, all of the protocols are in this course and you can get it now for 25% off through the code period. So just enter the code period in that. I'll leave the description or the link in the description below. It's alliedermancom forward slash period. And you can get 25% off that course and get all the protocols that I use. If you haven't hit the subscribe button yet, hit that button to be notified anytime I post new content relating to women's health, hormones, and holistic health. I'll see you guys in the next one.